So we've got Stage 13 Tour de France. We've got some discussion here. Some people were saying, do you think Egan will still win the Tour de France? My money's still on Egan. Egan the vegan, there's three of them. There's the Tadej, Primoz Roglic, and Egan the vegan banal. Uh, Egan the vegan hardly banal. This room breaks loose. That's an interesting. Why is it loose? Didn't know rim brakes could get loose. Rim brake should be banned. All right, we see in stage 13, we see a total dominance of the rim brake riders. Because hang on, stage 13, hardly that was won by some guys on disc brakes. The disc brakes didn't hold them back. A lot of people don't understand how pro cycling works in the Tour de France. It's, it's about 21 stages. And the most important thing for cyclists is the one who wears the yellow jersey. That's the overall leader of the Tour de France. And right now, that is a guy by the name of Primoz Roglic, who's riding on a rim brake bike. Super, it's, it's the lighter, lighter bike. So the rim brakes add weight. You have slow wheel changes. The brakes don't work. They're on and off. You saw Zacharin. You saw Julian Alaphilippe. You saw Hershey having issues with the rim disc brakes on the descents, like grabbing and, you know, you go all over the place. <laughs> Noise. Just squealing in the wet Lopez crashed because of his disc brakes they just locked up too easy you know so rim brakes are like women they're fantastic but they're very temperamental all right when you want consistent braking as a road racer you go with the trusted rim brake you know how to fix it you can adjust it in 10 seconds disc brakes good for other applications uber eats gravel riding you know dirt Commuting in the cold, wet UK winters, discs are great. But for road racing, it's going to be the rim. I'm a fan of disc brakes. I sell disc brakes. People are like, Harley, you, you're just trying to push Pragma sales, rim brakes. Most of my sales, 80% of my sales, are my disc brake Pragmas, all right? I'm just being real here. Rim brake for road racing, okay? If you want the lightest bike, rim brake. Road brake. Anyway, it's just so we're clear on that one. But yeah, people will think, people will understand that People watch, people watch the stage yesterday, stage 13, they saw Martinez in that win. They're like, oh, look at that disc brake, Super 6. Yeah, it must be better than the old wind brake. It's not. There's no way on earth Martinez would choose a disc brake bike for a climbing stage. Yeah? What about the downhills? Can you think of any bicycle race, professional world tour road race, where a disc brake rider dropped the rim brake rider because... the the Shimano Durace calipers weren't good enough. Never. It's never going to happen. All right? These pro riders have exceptional skills. Rim brakes are good enough for pro riders. Road racing. The reason why Martinez won is he was the best of the breakaway group. So in the Tour de France, you have the guys who are going to win. There's two or three or four of them. And then you've got the guys who are top ten. And then you've got the rest of the pack. And you've got the sprinters, the guy who wants the polka dot climbers jersey, the points jersey, etc. And so yesterday, we saw the breakaway... 10 minutes. Guys, you go. 10 minutes. See you later. Bye-bye. 10 minutes. You go. Because you're not a threat for the overall general classification, aka GC, for the yellow jersey. So that's why Martinez won, not because he was the fastest rider there. If you look at the times of the climbs, it's the rim brake riders who do the fastest time. Roglic, Egan the Big and Banal, Tadish, Poga Kaka. You know, those are the guys on the rim brakes who do the fastest time. Who's done the best watts per kilo on the Tour de France this year? Tadej, six point, about 6.7 watts per kilo for 24 minutes, something parasort, approximately. What bike's he on? Rim brake. There's no rubbing at big power. Get the saddle, there's no ding, 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 ding. There's no slow wheel change anxiety for the, yourself and the mechanics. There's no overheating on the descents. It's just consistent, concise braking performance every time. Disc brakes. One descent, they're okay. Next thing, they're ding, 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 ding. They're squealing, they're locking, they're blah, blah, because things get hot. Right. So they're, they're not consistent. And that's okay if you're gravel riding and you're commuting and whatever. But when you're road racing, going down the descent at 100k an hour, you know, millimeters, inches from someone else next to you, and your brakes all of a sudden grab, that's really, that's really, really dangerous. So we saw it with Zachary and going down the hill, he's running out of sugars, and his brakes are like, yeah, 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 yeah. And he was just going down the hill like, a, like he was just started riding. We saw Lopez crashing out. Because he went to use his, his disc brakes and they, were, they weren't consistent. They're not consistent braking because the heat expansion in the master cylinder can cause brake fades. Sometimes you have to grab it harder. Sometimes you don't grab it. You know? It's very inconsistent. And then he just he, he touched the brakes and his back wheel locked up on a white line, a bit of soap, and then bam. If it was on a rim brake, it probably wouldn't have crashed. It would have been consistent. 
So the, the, the disc brakes are not consistent at that pinnacle level of descending skill in the road. People are, oh, I ride my disc brakes bikes down there. You know, down, I'm in LA there on the PCH, and yeah, it's fantastic. I'm on my Specialized S-Works Venge, and yeah, it's just the guy who's a good disc brakes to go. I'll go down there on El Tuna Canyon, and uh, you know, what what about Botargos, and it's all good, mate. So you, you're not descending as fast as those pros are on the Tour de France, you know. So... <laughs> It's, yeah, it's, oh man. And that's that's where people lose me and I lose people because they're like, oh, you're doing right. No, you're wrong. Like, the pros are choosing that. You know, look at that. The, the S5 won a, won a mountain stage in the Tour de France. It's like, he's like pack fill. I'm not being mean or nasty. I'm just saying that the guy who won the S5 dentist bike is pack fill. He's way faster than me, but he's pack fill at the Tour de France. So just like, you go ahead, mate. You go ahead. And that's how we race in the Tour de France. It's a big family. A lot of politics and stuff here and there, but you don't try and win every single stage. You share it around. Yeah, you have the win time. I'll have the win tomorrow. You go first. You go get this jello jersey. We'll work for you today. You work for us tomorrow. You know, it's, it's a bit of give and take. It's not just like, I'm going to go in there and win every stage. Like, no, nah, you do that, then you're going to make a lot of enemies. So there's no way in heck. If, can you imagine if, you know, if Scott, Team Sky and Jumbo wanted to take control of the Peloton race, they could have done that. But what's the point? Let the breakaway have some air time. Let them have some fun. You know, you got two races yesterday. You got the breakaway. Are they going to make it? Are they going to get caught at the line? Will the big GC hitters catch them? Oh, there's no, who's going to win? The Martinez or the, the two Bora riders? You know? Oh, they won this break. Wow, it must be new tech. I'll go, wow, it's better. Look at them. They won the stage. Wow, they beat the yellow jersey up the climb. Because the yellow jersey wasn't trying. The yellow jersey was watching Egan the Vegan. And the Tadej. And Richie Port did a good ride, didn't he? You know, my money's on a, a little dark horse, Richie Port, for sure. But his bike is going to let him down. Slow wheel changes, rubbing rotors, extra weight, dead feeling. They just feel dead. Disc brakes on a road bike feel dead relative to a rim brake bike. They just do. Oh, no, 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 Holly. I've, I've, got my, I've got my specialized tarnacle, my, my Trek, my Dome disc, and it feels good, mate. It feels fast. Yeah, that's great because you've only ridden five bikes in your life. You know? And they, these bikes do ride nice. But then you jump on the equivalent rim brake model and you're like, wow, this is, geez, wow, it's night and day. It's night and day. Go out and buy what I've done. Go out and buy a Durace disc brake bike and go out and buy a Durace rim brake bike from the same model. I've done that. You know, one even had alloy rims. Durace wheels that still felt way better than the carbon zips. You know, 202s. Night and day difference. And it was just my opinion. Every person I said, hey, ride this bike, ride that bike, which just feels lighter and friskier. The rim brake bike always does. It's just how it is. It's just how it is. What people do is they maybe buy a, a two dollar bike with Shimano saw eight speed and the gears don't shift properly, and the brakes are like you know the rims are super worn, the pads aren't lined up properly, and then they get on a disc brake bike in the demo. Oh, it's so much better. Yeah, it's so much better, and it is better. But the, uh, the rim brake bike wasn't properly maintained, and vice versa. You can get a, a disc brake bike we haven't bled it properly. Or you've got to bring it more, or it's just faffing around, or the master cylinder is leaking, you've got to send it back to Shimano for warranty, or maybe it's part of the SRAM recall break, you haven't sent it back yet, and then it's faffing around. Which is sort of okay, tolerable, if you're just cruising around. But if you're chasing every single second, if you're chasing six watts, you know, seven watts per kilo after climbs, that disc brake ain't going to cut it for you. Ain't going to help. So I, my, my heart goes out for guys like Richie Port, who have talent, who have credibility, who have Palomares, have whoever a resume of perform high level performances in the world tour cycling, but they're relegated to lesser technology, aka road disc. Richie Port doesn't need a disc brake bike. That guy can fly down mountains. All those guys, all those GC guys, because if you, if you can't keep on contact and you get dropped and you lose time in the climbs, or you lose glycogen in the climbs and you lose watts in the climbs, and then the day eats you up, fatigue wise. So, Richie Port doesn't need disc brakes. Thibaut Pinot doesn't need These are the guys who are the you know, the back group GC who still are, could be a, you know, a, a contenders. You know, still GT contenders, but I don't put them in the same level as you know, Tadej and uh, Roglic and Egan the Vegan Banal. You know, these guys are the, like, you know, the top tier. Richie Port's like second tier top level potentials. And then you've got guys like uh, Thibaut Pinot. He would be like second tier bottom level tier of the second tier and so this year we only have three riders in that top a grade group three riders and they're all on rim brakes tadej 
Egan the Vegan and Roglic. Two Slovenians and a Colombian. Um, and that's, just, that's how it is. So people, and then Martinez would be a third tier GC group, topper level, you know, but he's like way back. So they can say, yeah, you can have 10 minutes, no worries, because you know, that's cool. You go do that. Win the stage for JV. Get some publicity for the disc brake bikes. And that's fine. That's just business. It's marketing. Tour de France is one big marketing circus. And so when your average reader comes along, Harley, you know, no, 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 no. like, I, I get you don't understand it. You haven't been racing for, for 23 years like I have and working in the industry and blah, 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 blah. You know? People don't understand what's going on with the, the marketing. You know, you don't have a bike brand. You don't sell, but you don't work on bike. Like, it's just all, you know, not, not to be sound arrogant, but people just don't know. And then they're just like, yeah, 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 yeah. I've got 10 likes in this comment. This must be true. It's like, dude, right, what's the deal? You got to, something against these brakes. You got an obsession about this brake. What? It's just, I'm just reporting, but I'm a journalist. And I, I, I journalize on, uh, you know, I blab on about real life content. And it's the disc rim brake debate will always go on. And I'll keep sharing my bit about it because a lot of people out there, oh, yeah, yeah. so I'm just, I'm just uh, giving some narrative. My narrative, some experience narrative to the social narrative we see on GCN or Cycling Tips or Cycling News or Bike Radar or Velo News, etc., etc., or itchynose.com. Just give them my narrative there. Because there's people out there, you know, who go, oh, maybe I need a disc brake bike. Maybe my SL6 rim brake at Tarmac's not good enough. I need an SL7 disc brake bike because, no, you don't. You regret it, man. You 100% regret it. It won't feel as zippy and nice. It won't. It would just. It just will not. It can't. It's extra weight. You had five hundred grams to a bike. You feel that, man. You feel that. It doesn't matter. You can't. It doesn't mean you can't ride. I'm just saying. Why would you have such a good bike you got now, and then go get disc brakes for road racing? I don't, it baffles me. It baffles me. But I've been there. I've been the guy. Wow, disc brakes are good on road. Don't yeah, yeah. And I bought one, and I rode it around. I'm like, this is pretty good. And then you ride your rim brake bike, and you're like, oh, yeah, dang, no, this is better. This is much better. This is much faster. But again, if you don't have skills in the descents, disc brake won't do it for you, because you've still got to turn the bike around the corners. Disc brakes give you more confidence. You go faster, you have bigger crashes. That's all happening. That's all the disc brakes are doing. They give you more confidence. You don't have the skill. You shouldn't be going extra fast, you know? And then that filter's removed. You're like, oh, I've got a disc brake. I'm going to stop whenever time I want. And then, bam, big crashes. Disc brakes cause a lot of crashes, because they make... Unconfident people, more confident with more brake power, they go faster. It's not how fast you go, it's how you go fast. So if disc brakes are letting you go faster, but you don't have the skills to back yourself up, itchynose.com is going to come and get you. Yeah. So that's the deal there. So who will win the Tour de France? It's going to be one of the three disc brake, uh, wind brake riders. It won't be a disc brake rider unless the three guys crash out. I think, you know, I think Egan Bernal still could be a winner. But, but, itchyear.com suggests that Primos and uh, Tadej are on some really good form right now. You know, and just their faces, they, they could have gone way faster. They could have gone way faster up the climb. Egan was on limit. He's like showing his face, you could feel it. But Tadej and Primoz weren't even close to the limit. They were looking cool. I, 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 if I give you guys, if you're watching Tadej and Primoz, if I give you one tip, make it look like it actually hurt. Right? Put on a bit of strain. Squirt the water bottle in your face. Make it look like a sweat. They had dry faces at the top of the climb. The Pew Mary. You know, they, they had, like Egan was sweating and glow and glisten. Primoz and Tadej didn't look like they were sweating at all. Like, come on, give us, make it look not so easy. All right, like make it look, make, give yourselves a bit of sweat. Where's the PR here? Where's the who's? Where's the director sport of guys in the microphone? Guys like put a bit of exertion on the face, you know. Maybe hold your breath for a couple of pedal strokes so you you breathe in a bit more. Like just make it look like you're actually working because they weren't working at all. They could have attacked and gone way way harder, but you don't want to make it look too uh, too dominating. So that was uh, pretty amazing watching that. The Egon is really, really good. Crazy time. Stand up late watching Tour de France. Making me tired. Anyway, that's the deal with Tour de France Stage 13 highlights. 
the highlight was that rim breaks for the here for the win, and that those two Slovenian riders on some really good form, just crushing it, no fatigue, and I think that they need to make it look a bit tougher because this is Tour de France. We love it. We love it all.